of trigonometry. So today we're going to look at compound angle formulas and double and half angle formulas and the graphs of uh, trig equations. If, if time is going to allow us, we're going to finish the whole uh, trigonometry because th these are the only topics that we remain with. We touched compound angle formulas in the previous lesson, though we didn't finish it. So we're going to finish it in this lesson. And then um, these uh, remaining two parts are not such, they are not uh, that difficult. So we'll finish them first. Let's proceed. All right. So I had to put this. I wanted to remind you of one thing. Mm, there is that last question in binomial. Let me just write it here. It was, uh, I think it was like this. To something like this. Here, I think there was a plus, and then there was a two, and then x, like this. Yeah. So there was a question in the exercise that I gave you in binomial. And then this was also in your tutorial sheet. So I tried to ask Mr. Matindi if it's possible for you to, what, to simplify this or to expand this uh, question. And fortunately he said there was an error when making the question. So this question had no solutions. You cannot expand this using the uh, binomial formula, which is one plus uh, A to the power n. So you cannot use this to expand such an expression. I don't know if there, if there are other methods uh, you can use, but so far, uh, from what I know, you can't expand this. It's not possible. So we proceed. So remember where we ended uh, last time? We ended on this question and we did part of this and I'm, I'm happy that most of you from the exercise that I gave you, you are able to solve uh, most of these questions here. Yeah, because some of you submitted your work and I was able to see to say, uh, most of you did, a, a good, did some good work there. You managed to solve most of these questions, which implies that you understood. Yeah, so just for revision sake, when you have, let's say sine 225, sine 225 is just the same as sine. You find two special angles that you can add uh, or subtract to give you 225. So sine 225 can be written as sine 180, so you can add 180 and uh, 45 to get 2.5. So it's just a matter of replacing there for sine. The compound angle formula for sine is like this. So I'm going to get this 180 and then cos uh, 45. Since there's a plus there for sine, you also add a plus there. And then you, sw you switch the angles now. See sine 45. And then cos 180. So this is how you find it. You know these are special angles, you can easily find them. So let's proceed. So if you need the solutions for this question here, uh, you can get them from that link. Same applies to this question 18. You also solve it in the same way. Then for these questions which are in, uh, for these questions which are in, 
which are in radian form, you first have to convert them to degrees. Then once you convert them to degrees, then you use the compound angle formula to find the final answer. So if you want solutions for that question as well, you can check them on that uh, link. Let's now move on to the new topic that I prepared for today, which is double and half angle formulas. So for double angles, let's take for instance, you have uh, a course. Uh, we know to say, okay, let me just be using my slides. Given this, okay, in the slide I used sign. Yeah, so given this uh, compound angle formula for sine, uh, sine A plus B is identically equal to sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. So now, given that uh, compound angle formula, let's try to make B. We say let B, we say let B, be equal to A. So it means that while there is B in this formula, we're going to put A. So while there is B here, we'll put A. So while there is B, we're going to put A. So what does that mean? You say let A be equal to B. Let A be equal to B. Yeah, so when, when you put where there is uh, A, where there is a B, you put A there, you have sine A plus A. And then you replace them in the formula, you have such an equation, which is a sine A. Where there, is, where there was B here, you put A. Where there is B here, you put A like that. And that's what you're going to have. So here, when you add uh, A plus A, you get 2A. And then you, this is equal to... When you add these, since now these have become like terms, sine A cos, B, cos A plus cos A sine A, they are just the same. Since multiplication is commutative, they are just the same. So this implies that you can add the two and get two sine A cos A. So this is what you are going to get after adding uh, the two functions. So from that, we can now conclude that this is the double angle formula for sine. Why are we calling it double? Because uh, we, are, we are doubling two, uh, we are doubling two angles which are of the same magnitude. Two times A, yeah, we're doubling two angles of the same magnitude. Then this is what we're getting here. So this is the, the double angle formula for sine. This is how you get it. You have to know this by heart. If you don't know them by heart, it's better you know how to derive them. Because without these, uh, you struggle in solving identities in trigonometry. So now imagine that this same double angle formula, we divide the angle by two. So when we divide this angle 2a by 2, this is what we're going to have. So if we divide this side, this is an equation uh, for the fact that we have an equal sign here. It is called an equation. So what happens in an equation is that when, what, whatever that you do on the left-hand side is also supposed to be done on the right-hand side. So if you divide this angle by 2 on the left-hand side, you also have to divide the angles by 2 on the right hand side. So when you divide sine 2a divide by 2, you are going to get sine a. These two and that two just cancel and then you just remain with a. So sine a is given by this same uh, thing here, this same function here. So this one is the one that we are calling the half angle formula for sine. It is called the half angle formula for sine. We move on to cos. We are doing the half, uh, the double, we did the double and the half angle formula for sine. You also have to master these. You, you just need to know them. If you don't know them, know how to come up with them, know how to form them. So 
we, we move on. So we move on to cos. Let us find the double and half angle formula for cos. So the same applies to cos. You first have to let your a, you let your, you let your a be equal to b, or you let your b be equal to a. It's just the same. So let, so let your b be equal to a. So you let your b be equal to a. So this simply means that wherever there is b in this uh, compound angle formula, we're going to put a. Let's try to put. So that is what we're going to have. We're going to have cos a plus a, which is equal to uh, cos a cos a minus sine a sine a. So when you simplify this, you are going to have cos 2a, you're going to have cos 2a being equal to uh, cos a times cos a, you get cos squared a minus sine a times sine a, you get your sine squared a. And then you, 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 if you want, you can get it, you can leave it like this, but there are also other two ways in which you can simplify this. You also need to know those two ways because they are very helpful. This is also important. You have to master it. So cos 2a is equal to sine squared a minus, or oh sorry, cos squared a minus sine squared a. And then, now we know this identity. Uh, if, if you were there when I was teaching the first lesson on uh, trigonometry, we looked at this identity, which is sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to one. But we are, we are going to look at it uh, in details today. So in this uh, sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to one, you can make cos squared a be equal to uh, that, which implies that you are just taking this sine squared a to the other side of the equal sign. And then this is what you're going to get here. Then you replace it while there's cos squared a in this uh, double angle formula, you replace by one minus sine squared a. And then when you simplify this, you are going to have that. So already for cos, we have two uh, forms of uh, double angle formulas for cos. We have this one, we have also this one that we found at first. And then there's also another one where you you, where you make, instead of making cos squared a the subject, now you make sine squared a the subject and then replace it there. When you replace it there, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get two cos squared a minus one. You can try it out on the separate paper or on your spare time. This is what you're going to get. So instead of making cos squared a the subject, you now make sine squared a the subject and then replace it while there's sine there. You put your, your answer there and then you simplify it. It's going to come to this. Let's proceed. So these that we've looked at are double angle formulas for course. These are double angle formulas for course. Let us now proceed to see what are the half angle formulas for course. So the half angle formulas for cos are as follows. There's this one here where you just divide your cos uh, two a by two, and then even the other side of the equal sign you divide by your angle by two, and then that is what you're going to get. So this is what you're going to get after simplifying, yeah, oh, sorry, this is what you're going to get when you divide your angles by two. Uh, when you divide the first one, the first uh, one that we got here by two, you'll get this side, this side here. And then when you divide the second one that we got by two, you get this. You divide their angles by two, you get this. And then when you simplify them, you're going to have, oh, sorry. Let me just. The double angle formula for tan is uh, you replace one that is B with A, you'll get that. You can
can try it on your spare time. You try it out. You try to derive that. It's also straightforward. While there is A, you just replace while there is uh, B here with A, then you get that. Same applies to the half angle formula. You just get the double angle formula and then divide the angles by two. You get that as your answer. So let us now try to look at these examples here. So these examples are simple. Let us try to look at A. So A here is saying cos, cos three theta. So cos three theta, we, they are saying express cos three theta in terms of cos theta. And how can you do that? Simple. You know that cos three theta can also be written as uh, cos, you can also write cos three theta as cos two theta plus theta. This is how, this is the other way in which you can write cos three theta. And then you know to say cos two theta plus theta using the double angle, uh, angle formula for cos, you get uh, cos cos two theta and then you you also get cos theta like that. Then since there's a plus here for cos, you change the sign, there's going to be a minus there. And then you have uh, sine two theta. You have sine two theta, and then this side sine theta. So this is how you write it. Now they want us to remain with cos theta everywhere. And then how can we do that? It's simple. Let me write the equal sign here. So cos two theta, the other way you can uh, write cos two theta using the double angle formula. Uh, that the double, the double angle formulas that we're just from learning. You can write cos two theta as two cos, you can write them as two cos theta uh, minus one, like this. Yes, this is the other way you can write your uh, cos two theta. And then this is cos theta here. You write your cos theta outside like that. And then minus sine two theta can also be written as uh, two sine theta. I'm just using their double angle formulas. Two sine theta cos theta. Two sine theta cos theta, and then multiply by this sine theta there. Multiply by sine theta. So we can simplify this to, when we multiply this cos theta with two cos theta there, you get two uh, cos squared theta, two cos squared theta, and then this cos theta times negative one there, you get a negative cos theta minus, and then this two sine theta times sine theta there, you get, two sine squared theta, you get two sine uh, squared theta, and then cos uh, theta like that. So we can now, I just remaining with 10 minutes, let me just finish up this one. So we can now conclude to say this cos theta, these two cos squared theta, Mr. Teddy. Yeah. Mr. Uh, I, uh, I'm, not sh I'm not clear with where the two cos theta minus one came from on the second line. Oh, sorry. Uh, this, this is supposed to be cos squared, not, not two cos theta. 
Oh, thank you for that correction. So this is going to be cos cubed kg. It's now clear? Yes. All right. So we proceed. So this is going to be two cos cubed theta, then minus cos theta, then minus. So this this sine squared theta, we know to say sine squared theta can also be written as uh, we know to say sine squared theta from the identities that were just from learning, we can also write it as uh, 1 minus cos squared theta. We can write it as 1 minus cos squared theta. Hope we can all see what I'm writing this side. So here I'll replace sine squared theta with 1 minus cos squared theta, like that. Then you close your brackets like that. Then cos theta outside. So here it's just a matter of simplifying the, uh, the expression. So you're going to get two cos, two, two cos cubed theta minus uh, cos theta. And then when you multiply these two times that times cos, you get your negative two, uh, you get your negative two cos theta. You multiply this negative two times the negative cos squared theta times cos, cos theta there, you get your positive uh, two cos cubed theta. And then here you just pair your like terms. So you add this, uh, plus that, you get your four for squared theta. And then you add uh, these two, rather subtract them, still the same. So you get your negative three cos uh, theta. So this is what they wanted for, for you to do. This is what they wanted you to do. This is the final answer. So cos three theta expressed in cos theta, this is what you're going to get here. It's just as simple as that. So same applies to B and C, you do them the same way. So I solved this, I think so. Yeah, the first one, cos A plus B, that's, what you, that's the identity you use to solve question A. And then you know that cos 2a gives you 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So you express it in that form. Cos 2 theta plus theta will now give you that. This is what you're just from doing. And then you get your solutions like that. So using sine squared theta is equal to that, you get your solution to be like that. Yeah. Then when you simplify that, you get your answers to be like that. You replace that uh, sine squared theta by one minus cos squared theta, you get that. And then you, you pair your like terms there, you find your answer to be like that. So B, you also do the same way, straightforward. Yeah, you can do it on your own time and submit your question. Try to send your question to me and I'll tell you whether you're correct or same applies to the last one here. So let us try to see this. This question, I don't know why a lot of people have been complaining to me that it's giving them problem, yet it's one of the simplest questions. Okay. They are saying, find the exact values of sine theta over two, cos theta over two, and tan theta over two. Do not use the calculator. So you've been told to say sine theta is this. And then they want you to find sine theta over two. 
We know the double angle formula for sine theta. I mean the half angle formula for sine theta, right? It's, um, okay, let's use the double, the half angle formula for, uh, anyway, let's, let's just write both of them, sine theta and cos theta. We see which one we can use. So for sine theta, we know to say it's sine theta is equal to uh, two uh, sine theta, two sine, sorry, let me just erase this. It's going to be two sine, two sine theta over two, and then cos uh, theta over two. So they are asking us to find uh, sine theta over two. So from this, uh, from this expression, we can make sine theta over two as, the, uh, as our, as the subject from this expression. Now, before we write that, let us also first write for cos. So we know to say cos, we know to say cos theta can also be written as one minus two uh, sine theta over two. Yeah, one minus sine theta, sine theta over two. Sine squared here is supposed to be squared. All right, so having been given this, we can, uh, we can write to say, let's do this. So we have our theta there. And then this is just uh, the, what, the, the, the range where theta lies. So this one is the one that we're going to use uh, to find the quadrant in which theta lies. The meeting will end very soon. Okay, so sine theta we learn to say is opposite over hypotenuse. So our opposite there is three and then five is our hypotenuse and then our adjacent is going to be four. So from this we can find cos theta. So from this we can find uh, cos theta. So cos theta is going to be equal to So cos theta is going to be equal to, uh, we know to say theta is between zero and 270. So cos theta is going to be, uh, it's going, cos theta is going to be at adjacent over hypotenuse, which is four over uh, five. This is going to be our cos theta. So it's just a matter of now replacing your cos theta there. So while there's cos theta, I can put four over five. And then this is equal to one minus uh, two sine squared theta. I don't know what sine squared theta is. So, sorry, sine squared theta over two is, I don't know. So I'm going to write it the way it is. Say the um, finding cos theta will give us four over five. And then you put your four over five this side. Then you're going to have one minus two sine squared theta uh, this side. So meaning you just have to bring this uh, one this side, which will give you something like this. This is four over five, four over five minus one is equal to negative two sine squared uh, theta over two. And then when you subtract this, you're going to get your answer to be 
4, that is going to be negative 1 over 5, like this. Okay, 4 minus 5, yeah, all right. We are getting this. And then this equal to um, negative 2. This is supposed to be squared there. Negative 2 sine squared theta over 2. Negative 2 sine squared theta over 2. Then you divide both sides by 2. Even this side you divide by 2. So you are, when you divide this uh, by 2, you are going to have, oh sorry, by negative 2, even this side by negative 2, you're going to have 1 over 10 this side as your answer is equal to sine squared. You're going to have sine squared uh, theta over 2, like that. So here it's just a matter of uh, finding the square root of uh, this. So we know to say this square, this side always moves with a plus or minus. Let me just mute everyone. All right. So this is what you're going to get. So here we have two possible answers. We have two possible answers here. We we'll either have sine theta over two being equal to a positive one over uh, the root of ten, or so. When you solve this, you are going to have. Uh, sine theta, oh sorry, we've already been given sine theta, so there's no need of solving this. So we ended on uh, sine, sine theta over two, uh, being equal to one over the root of 10. And since we had plus or minus, meaning there's also a possibility of us getting our sine theta over 2 uh, being equal to the, to the negative of this same answer this side. So th these are the possible solutions that you have. And then we proceed. So from, from what we've been asked to find, at least we've found what sine theta is, or sine theta over two is. We also now need to find uh, what cos uh, theta over two is. So from the expression that we wrote here, where we said sine theta, the double angle formula, or the half angle formula for sine theta is equal to two, sine theta over two, and then you write cos uh, theta over two like that, this side. So since we have our sine theta, which has been given in the question as uh, three over two, you just have to replace it there, or oh, three over five, sorry, or three over two. You replace it there, and then you already have your sine theta over two, which is a, a one over the root of 10. And then you write your cos theta over to this side. Theta over to this side. So now here is just the matter of making cos theta over to the subject of the formula. And then when you do that, you're going to get your course theta over two uh, to be equal to your three over, this is 10, 
then when you divide this by one over 10, you get uh, z one over root 10, you get something like this. Okay, these answers looks looks very strange. Let me try just to prove them using the calculator. Let me just try to prove them. So we said uh, sine theta over two is equal to that. Okay, just wait for a moment. Let me just see whether the answers are correct. So this is uh, giving us that. So getting that. All right, they are correct. Yeah. So this is what you're going to get when you, when, you, when you make your cos theta over to us the subject, you get your answer to be like this. Okay. So now for you to find tan theta over two. So tan theta over two is straightforward. We know the identity for tan theta. So since we are using tan theta over two, it means that you are going to divide your sine theta over two. Sine theta over two, and then everything over cos uh, theta over two. So your answer, you're going to get uh, something like uh, this, which is, you divide the uh, sine theta over two. Yeah, for this one, the first cos theta over two that you're going to get is this. So you also have to calculate your answer when, when sine theta over two is negative of that. You also have to find the answer there. So meaning, while, there is sine, while we had put one over root 10, in the next solution you put uh, one, negative one over root 10. Okay, let me just solve it quickly here so that you know what I'm talking about. So this side, you, you leave it the same, you put three over five, then now this side, you put your two there, and then here, you're going to put your negative one over the root of uh, 10. You put it in brackets, and then you put your cos theta over two, like that, this side. So meaning your cos theta over two can also be, so your cos theta over two can also be equal to, uh, it is just the same one now, it's in the negative form. So this is going to be negative uh, three over 10, then there's the root of 10 this side. Yeah, so for tan theta over two, you put your sine theta over two on top there, which is uh, one over the root of 10, and then everything divided by cos theta over two is uh, three over uh, 10 root 10 this side. So here it's just a matter of simplifying. You simplify them and find the final answer. So when you find the final answer, you also have to find the answer for this when cos theta over two is negative now. You find it this side, you... It means that you're going to get the negative of that. Where is it? You're going to get the sine theta over two, which is a negative, and the cos theta over two, which is a negative. You divide them and then find the final answer. But I can assure you to say you still find the same answer that you are going to find uh, after simplifying this. When you simplify this, the same answer that you find is the same answer that you're going to find on the second part, which is just the same as not finding the second part, meaning you just end it here. I hope it's clear. So let's look at the let, let's look at the trig identities. 
So for trig identities, you just collect all the trigonometric identities that we've been learning from the first lesson up to where we are. You collect them and then put them together. They'll help you to solve, uh, to prove the identities of trigonometry. So the first one, the, the very important ones that we have are huh? this one. So the first important trick identity that you should have in mind, which, is, which should just be on your fingertips, you, you don't have to forget it, is this one, which is sine squared a plus cos squared a, which is equal to one. Then the second one, you have to divide this same trick identity by sine. And then when you divide sine theta over sine squared theta or sine squared a over sine squared a, you divide uh, it, yeah, you divide the whole trig identity by sine theta in short, you get that. Then that becomes your second trig identity that you should also know. You get the same trig identity and divide it by cos. When you divide it by cos, you are going to have your answer to be that. And then that is the third trig identity that you have to put in mind. So the three trig identities are very important and you don't have to forget them. These are the ones that will help you to solve those uh, questions which says prove the following identities. These three are the main ones that are uh, actually used in those questions. And then there are also other trig identities. Uh, these are the half and double angle formulas. These are the ones that I'm putting here. First of all, we have uh, cot A, we know to say cotangent of A is just the same as cos over sine. Um, of course, we know that the tangent of A is sine over cos, meaning the reciprocal of uh, uh, tan it gives you cot. So there's also this one here, which is number five which is just the double angle formula for cos. There's also the sixth one, it's just the double angle formula for cos. You need to know these trig identities. So for instance here, you can be asked uh, to, simplify this, uh, to simplify the trigonometric function to either a constant or a function. Yeah, you can be asked to solve such identities to either a constant or a function. So this is straightforward. For the first question here, for those that have tried to solve this, uh, this uh, identity, you can attest with me that uh, I think there was, a, there, there was an error somewhere. Yeah. But for the, for the remaining ones, uh, they're just okay. You can solve them. Okay, let's take for instance uh, this one here. This one. Okay. So we have, um, let me see the time. We're just remaining with five minutes. Okay. Okay, let's try to solve D maybe. Ah, let me just try, start with B. We're going to continue in the next meeting. We're just going to. Maybe do 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 the remaining ones. In, let me see what, what we're remaining with. So we're remaining with just trig identities. Then from there we move to graphing. So I think we will not do graphing today. But I prepared the notes for graphs. I think we will not do graphing today. We we'll agree on the time we're going to do it. Let me just solve uh, some of the trig identities here. You see what I was talking about. So we start with B. B is saying cos squared, uh, cos squared x. So cos squared x uh, minus one. You have something like this. And then you have your tan uh, squared x plus one. You have it like that. And then they're asking us to simplify this to either uh, one, to either a single trigonometric uh, function or a constant. So when you look at this, tan squared x plus one, tan squared x plus one is just the same as sec. From these identities, you can see here to say, 
uh, tan squared d a plus one is just the same as six squared a. So we can write six squared a in place of tan squared. So we can write six squared x, six squared x, you put it like that. And then here, when you look at cos squared x minus one, from this identity, from this identity, which said sine squared a plus cos squared a, we can make um, sine squared a the subject. So when we make sine squared a the subject, we're going to have uh, something like this. One minus cos uh, squared. So you're going to have something like this. So once you have uh, this, so if you want to come, if you want to come up with uh, cos squared x minus one, it means that you have to manipulate this in such a way that cos becomes positive and sine and one becomes negative. So this means that we're going to divide by negative one, then everything by negative one. So when you divide sine squared a by negative one, you get negative sine uh, squared a. This is what you're going to get. And then this side you're going to get, when you divide this by that, you are going to have, uh, this is going to have a negative one. Let me just write it this side. And then you're going to have negative one into negative four squared x. You're going to have your positive four squared a. So we have achieved what we wanted here, which is four squared x minus one. We have achieved it. So when is cos squared a minus one, we can replace with negative sine squared a. So I'll put my negative sine squared a here. Negative sine squared. Now in this case, I'm using x. But again, we know to say sec is nothing but uh, sec is nothing but uh, one minus uh, one minus cos squared x. Six squared x is nothing but one, sorry, not minus, but one over uh, cos squared x, like this. So when you multiply the two, you are going to get, uh, uh, time is almost up, you are going to get negative sine squared x, then everything over, uh, cos squared x, which gives you tan. When you look at this identity, it's just the same as tan. So this one is going to give you negative tan squared x like that. So I've expressed it as a single function according to the question. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question here is cos z plus sin z tan z. So we know to say tan is nothing but sine over cos. So we can write our equation here. This cos, cos z, then plus sine z. And then I know to say tan z is just the same as uh, sine uh, sin z over uh, cos z. So here we can simplify it by most by multiplying sin z and this other sin z. Then we're going to have something like this. Okay. So this is what we're going to have. We're going to have cos z plus uh, sine times sine, you get your sine squared z there. And then everything over cos z. And then over on this side. Then when you cross multiply there, or you find the common uh, denominator, our common denominator here is uh, cos z 
And then one into cos, it's cos, cos times cos, you get your cos squared z, you get your cos squared z, and then plus cos z into cos z is one, one times sine, you get your sine squared z, you get your sine squared z like that. But according to the trig identities on this uh, question, or on this page, we know to say sine squared a plus cos squared a is nothing but one. So here we know on top here, we have sine squared z plus cos squared z, which is just the same as just writing one. So this is going to be one over cos z. This is just the same as one over cos z. And then we know to say, um, one over cos is nothing but sec. So this is going to be sec z. So sec z is going to be our final answer here. And we have expressed it as a single function. So same applies to the remaining questions. You can, you can work around uh, with them. You see if they're giving you the single function you know that, uh, let's take for instance D here, you know that sec y, sec y is nothing but uh, one over cos, and then you know also to say cos, oh yeah, cos y, you can leave it like that. Um, and then everything divided by tan. Okay, so you can uh, work around with this question, you see whether to give you the, a single, but just by looking, I think when you solve this, it can give you something like sine. It's going to give you something like a sine, I think so, as the final answer. So you can check it out, solve it on your spare time. You just simplify, just make sure that you're applying these uh, identities which are here. Uh, you apply them and you see your solution will always come to a single function or your constant. So let's proceed, let's see other identities. So now, uh, when you look at this identity here, these identities are straightforward. We can also solve it using the same identities that were, that were given on that page. Yeah. So, the question is saying, prove each of the following identities. So in short, what they are trying to say is that make this part here to look like this other part on the right-hand side, or make this uh, on the right-hand side to, make, to, to, to look the same as the one that is on the left-hand side. So when proving such identities, when you take the left-hand side here, you say let, uh, yeah, when you take the right-hand side, you say let the right-hand side be equal to that you write it one uh, one minus a sine x and then everything divided by one yeah i'm writing it in this way yeah this question when you look at it I, I was trying to solve it the day I was making the tutorial videos. They discovered to say, when you solve this one, trying to take it in this way, you are going to have a plus here instead of a minus. You are going to have a plus instead of a minus. So I discovered that there was, a, there was an error somewhere. And then, but when you switch them, you switch the one which has a minus here, you put it as the numerator, and the one with the plus, you put it as the denominator here. It becomes easier for you and simpler for you to solve it, and you get to that answer. So this one here, you can find the conjugate of that. So the conjugate is just the same thing here, but you just change the sign in between them. So the conjugate is... Um, the conjugate for this denominator there is one minus sine x like that. 
and then everything on top there one minus sign x again like that okay let me just write this proper okay. see sign x so one minus sign x like that so this is just the same as adding nothing to this because when you divide one minus sign x over one minus sign x you get one one times that you get the same thing so meaning it's just the same as adding nothing so let us try now to multiply them so when you multiply this times that it's just the same as you having uh, one squared minus uh, it's just the same as having one squared minus uh, a sine squared theta. This is the difference of two squares. Sine squared x. And then these two here on top are just the same. When you multiply them, uh, multiplying them can just be the same as doing this. Just putting them, just putting this in brackets. Then you raise it to the power uh, two, like that. So we know to say, yeah, we know to say this one squared minus sine squared theta can also just be written as uh, one minus sine squared theta because one squared is just the same as one. You get your answer to be one. So one minus sine squared theta, according to the identities here, yeah, here, you make cos A, the subject, you take sine that side, you're just going to have one minus uh, sine, one minus sine squared theta. So while there is one minus sine squared theta, while there is one minus sine squared theta, you can replace with cos, squared theta, or theta in this case is x. Yeah, and then on top there you have one minus sine x. Then everything in square, you square everything like that. So this can also be written as, uh, so this cos squared x can also be written as this. We can also write cos squared x as uh, this. You put your cos inside the brackets and you put this squared outside. It's just the same. So when you write something like this, simply means that you can also write it as uh, one minus sine, one minus sine x, in brackets like that, you square everything, you square everything like that, and then over, this is cos x, according to the rules of indices. Yeah, this is just the same. So this again can be written as uh, one over cos, x you can write it as one over cos x and then minus sine x sine x like that over cos x and then when you do this you square everything like that and then afterwards, you say 1 over cos x, you get your answer to be uh, sec. Sec x. Though the answer will look a little bit different. So in short, what they, want, what they were supposed to do is just to put a plus here. We would have gotten the same answer. Now, this. <laughs> Okay. Um, we were told there was a mistake in the question. Question seven A. 
supposed to be the next plastic. It's oh, there's, a, there's supposed to be a plus, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's the reason why I was saying it cannot come out the same way because I think there was a mistake somewhere. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Anyway, but this is the way you're supposed to solve it. So you can try to put a plus here. You can try to put a plus here. Let me do this. So you can try to put a plus there and then try to solve the equation. You come back, but just follow the same steps that I've been doing here. You, you get the answer. And then this is supposed to be sec x and then minus. So sin x over cos x, you get your tan x this side. The reason why they've switched is because I switched this. The one that is supposed to be down is up and the one, the one that is up is down. So and then you have your answer to be like that. So just by following the same steps, you can, you can use this to go to that when there's a plus there. All right. So let's try to solve another question. Yeah. yeah, but since we don't have much time, I think let's let's move on to those that are a little bit complicated because these questions are straightforward. You know, cot squared theta plus one is just nothing but uh, cot squared theta plus one is nothing but cos x squared theta, and then tan squared theta plus one here is just the same as uh, uh, sec squared theta. And then you you do the mathematics there, you will find yourself there to cot x. And then same applies to this, you... Anyway, let's try to do another one. But this one is straightforward, I think. Let's try to do this one, maybe. Sine x uh, minus cos x and then you put this in square brackets like that is equal to uh, i'll put them as the left hand side now because i'm using the left hand side so in short they are telling me to use this to go to that so what i'm going to do here is uh, we know how we expand uh, we know how to expand this uh, this function. So the way you expand this is just the same as uh, multiplying these two times. So you say sine times sine there, you get uh, sine squared, you get sine squared x, and then minus sine, sine times negative cos x, you get, uh, yeah, okay, sine x times negative cos x, you get your negative sine x, cos x. And then you also try to multiply. Okay, let me just write this, this side for the sake of understanding. I'll write it this side, sine x minus cos x. Yeah, so this simply means that you're multiplying this same thing twice. minus cos x. Okay. Cos x like that. So, sine x minus cos x. So this is the same as sine times sine there. Sine times, uh, this sine times that sine, you get your sine squared. And then sine times negative cos, you got you get your negative sine and cos x. Same applies to negative cos x times sine x, you get again your negative sine x cos x. You get your negative sine x cos x. And then your negative cos x minus cos x uh, multiplied by negative cos x, there you get your plus, which is a positive. Uh, sine uh, squared 
oh sorry not sine co squared uh, x you get your cos squared x like that so when you pair the like terms you discover that this sine squared x okay let me just pair this sine squared x plus cos squared x i'll write them this side so when you're doing identities they are advised to have to have what they call in mathematics the, the third eye you need to know where you're going you need to see where you are going you know to say i'm going this side so i've seen to say when i pair sine squared x and cos squared x it's an identity that i'm going to have which uh let me just do this it's an identity that i'm going to have which 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 is just the same as one so i'll put them together like that for squared x like that and then negative sine sine cos x minus sine cos x there you get your negative uh, two uh, sine x and then cos x so this plus that we know to say you get one so this is just equal to the left hand side same applies to this just go to the left hand side and then this plus that sine squared x plus cos squared x we know according to the identities that this is one and then you write the remaining things here minus two uh, sine x cos x So we have proved it. This is the final answer. Yeah. It's just as simple as this. And then someone is suggesting that we can we should also do we should also do f. Let's see where we're going to go with it. So f is saying uh sec y f is saying sec y plus tan y okay so um when you have such a question and then what i forgot to tell you when you are solving trig identities you look at the one that seems to be most complicated they, you you take the complicated part and uh solve it try to simplify it you see if it's going to get you to the simplified part the one that looks more complex is the one that you use. So in this one, in this question, I would take this part this side. One over sec y minus sine y. So one over sec y and then one over sec y and then minus one minus sine y. So I know to say sec y is just nothing but one over cos. So this is one over cos y. And then open brackets. In brackets we have one minus sine y. Like that. So here, this is identically equal to the left hand uh, side. So from there, we can now multiply through with one over cos y. So one over cos y, so I'm going to have something like that. One over, one over cos y times one, you get your answer to be one over cos y. And then minus this times that you get your sine y over cos y sine y over cos y so this will also give us what one everything divided by so one over cos y is sec y So one over cos y is sec y and then 
minus sine y over cos y is the same as tan uh, is the same as tan y I had. Okay. It's the same as tan y. So here, um, let's see what I can do here. Okay. All right. So here, what we can do again is uh, finding the conjugate of that, the conjugate of this. So the conjugate of uh, sec y minus tan y is uh, sec y plus tan y. Sec y plus uh, tan y, that's the conjugate that we have. Then meaning we're also going to multiply the numerator with sec y tan y, sec y plus tan y, like that. So here what we're going to get is, hmm, the space is more now, I don't know where, okay, let me just write them in this side, I'll write them here. Just hope that it's going to fit. So, we're going to have something like this on top. We're going to have sec y uh, plus tan y. And then everything over uh, sec y. Uh, this, when you look at the denominator here, it's just the same as it's the difference of two squares. So we can, in other words, we can write it as sec squared. We can write it as sec squared one, and then minus, uh, this is tan squared. Tan squared y. This is tan squared y. Okay, so this, when you look at it, as I said, you need to have the third eye, you need to know where, where you are going. So this six squared y is just the same as uh, one over cos uh, squared y. And then this tan squared y is just the same as sine squared y over cos squared y. Then when you find the common denominator there, all right, let's see, let's see what, let me write what I'm talking about here. So we're going to have sec uh, y, and then plus uh, tan y. Then everything divided by sec squared y is just the same as one over cos squared y, like that. 1 over cos squared y minus, and then this is the same as, tan is the same as sine squared y over cos uh, squared y, like that. So, let me just erase what is here, what is down. So that we have at least space. Okay, I think this is enough. This is enough. We can write our answer there. So here, from here, what you can say is that. Uh, you find the common denominator. The common denominator there, we're going to have it as cos squared. We're going to have it as cos squared y. And then you divide cos into cos. Mm, let me write it like this, because here space will not allow us on top. 
Okay. I'll write the division sign there. Uh, I'll write the division sign there. Let me write it properly like that. Yeah. And then I'll write my common denominator. The common denominator will be uh, cos squared y. And then uh, this cos squared y into cos squared y is one. One times one there, you get your one. And then minus cos squared y into cos squared y, you get your answer to be uh, one. One times sine squared, uh, so one times sine squared y, you get sine squared y. Like that. So then you put this in brackets and then don't forget the numerator. The numerator there is sec y uh, plus tan y. Sec y plus tan sec y plus tan y. Then when you look at the numerator here, one minus sine squared y is just the same as cos squared y. Just the same as making uh, cos squared y in the, the subject in this uh, expression. When you make uh, uh, cos squared y as your subject in this expression, you are going to have it you're going to have this as your answer on this other side. So meaning this, this in other ways can also be written as, so this uh, one minus sine squared one is also the same as just cos. It's also just the same as writing cos. It's also just the same as writing cos, uh, cos squared y like that. So cos squared y will cancel with that cos squared y, meaning the denominator here will remain as one. When you divide this cos squared y into cos squared y, you remain with one. And then one into sec y, you get your answer to be sec y. Sec y. And then plus, one into tan y, you get your answer to be tan y. I hope the one who asked the question is happy now because you've solved it. And this is how you prove your identities. So proving identity is all about you having the third eye. You need to know where you're going. You need to see where you're going. You need to have it in mind that this is what I'm supposed to get. So that uh, whenever you see any identity which can help you to, to reach your destiny, you quickly employ it, you quickly use it. So let's move on to the next uh, question. Okay. All right. So this question here is saying prove the following identities. We're just remaining with 10 minutes, then you are done. Saying prove the following identities. The following identities are this. So here we know to say, okay, let me just solve quickly what I can solve. So the, the identities here, you know to say sine two theta can also be written as uh, two uh, sine theta, two sine theta, uh, cos theta. This is A that I'm answering. And then multiply by this same sine theta, which is already there. And then everything divided by 2 uh, cos theta. They want us to show that this is just equal to 1. So this 2 cos theta will cancel with that. This two cancel with that two. Sine theta plus sine theta. Let me write this. I've forgotten to put this. Let me see what I can just solve in the remaining seven minutes. So this is identical equal to the left hand side. They want us to show that what we've been given here can also be written as just one. 
So you, we've seen how these have canceled here. So sine th sin theta times sine theta there, you get your sine squared theta. You get your sine squared theta, and then plus cos squared theta, you write it there. which is identically equal to the left hand side. So we know by this time to say sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is nothing but one. So you will write down to say hence proved. So this is equal to the left hand side. You write even down here, hence proved. Is proved. You can write it there. Okay. So this is how you prove the first part. The first part of the question there. Let's see the second part there. So the second part, they want us to show that this is just the same as this. By this time, we know that uh, one plus tan squared theta is the same as cosec squared theta. So I'm going to write one minus tan squared theta on top there. So this is B, which I'm answering. Tan squared, we're using alpha this time around, over. So one plus tan squared alpha, we know according to the identities that this is just the same as cosec. Oh, sorry, this is just the same as sec, not cosec. It's just the same as sec. Six squared uh, theta. So this is identically equal to the L S S. So, but we know that six squared theta is just the same as one over. So let me write this. So one minus, we know that tan squared theta. Yeah, so I know to say tan squared theta tan squared theta is just the same as uh, sine squared theta, sine squared alpha over uh, cos squared alpha here. And then everything divided by sec squared theta is just the same as, uh, let me use the grade one way of writing this so that we solve quickly. So this, so we're dividing this uh, by, this is uh, six squared theta, it's just the same as one over uh, cos squared theta. So remember when you're dividing, uh, when you're dividing fractions, you just change the sign here to multiplication, and then when you change the sign, meaning even this part here has to uh, change, you flip this. So this is what you are going to have. So this is going to be cos uh, squared alpha over one. Then when you multiply everything here, you're going to have cos this side, Cos, cos, alpha, cos squared alpha times one, you get your cos uh, squared alpha, and then minus cos squared alpha times this part here is just the same as canceling this cos, you cancel it with that cos squared alpha, and then you remain with, uh, you are going to remain with sine squared alpha here. You're going to remain with sine squared alpha, being equal to the left hand side. So after this, we know to say cos squared alpha minus sine squared alpha is nothing but cos two alpha according to the identities. So since the time is up, I think next time we're going to come and begin from here. The next time we're going to meet and mind you, we're having a test on Monday. We need to see what we are, whether what we're learning or understanding or not. So we're going to have a test on Monday. Uh, 
and then I'm going to mark it maybe that same day or by Tuesday maybe I should be done but with marking. Then as we agreed, we said the one who scores the highest mark will receive 24 hours of airtime. Yeah. So if you have any questions about the test or about what we've been solving, you can ask in just this remaining time. So the test is going to go from uh, where we started from binomial up to today's uh, lesson. Then the next test is going to start from today's lesson up to where we're going to end. But uh, this test that we're having on Monday will just end, uh, will just end, uh, will just go up to where we've ended today. So if you have any questions, you can ask in just this remaining one minute. When submitting the, the answers for the test, we're supposed to scan the send. All right, thank you very much. I think, okay, I'll communicate to the group. I'll see which one will be convenient, which one will be easier for all of you to do. I'll communicate to the group by the end of today. All right, all right. See you in the next lesson.